So for today, we'll talk about the MP curve and the ISMP model. But before that, we should define the ISMP model. It is a mac macroeconomic model used to understand the business cycle. In other words, it is why real GDP changes in the short run. So it consists of the IS, MP, and Phillips curve. For this video, however, we'll be focusing on the MP curve. Okay, so the question is, what does MP curve represent? It represents the central bank's monetary policy. In other words, the curve shows how the central bank's interest rate impacts the output gap. As can be seen on the graph here, where it is a horizontal line with output gap as the x-axis or in the x-axis and real interest rate in the y-axis. Okay, so now we can talk about the long-term real interest rate, which underlies the household and investor decisions, and the short-term nominal interest rate that the Bank of Canada controls, where the relationship of this depends on three factors the term structure of interest rates, the risk structure of interest rates, and the expected inflation rate. Okay, now we'll talk about the term structure of interest rates. It is the relationship among interest rates on bonds that are otherwise similar, but that have different maturities. So we'll talk about the term structure effect here. So for the term structure, it is where investors' expectations of future short-term interest rates so this is because expectations of future rise and short-term rates tend to increase current long-term rates. In addition, when interest rates fluctuate, so do the prices of bonds, thereby potentially causing losses to investors in bond, so that needs to be taken into account. And then we also have the term premium here. It is the additional interest that investors require in order to buy a long-term bond rather than a comparable sequence of short-term bonds. In other words, this is to compensate lenders for the possibility that interest rates will change while they own the long-term bond. Okay, now we can talk about the rest structure of interest rates. This is the relationship among interest rates on bonds that have different characteristics but the same maturity. So we'll talk about the risk structure effect here, which is the default risk premium. It is the extra interest for risk that the bar borrower will fall to make payments of interest or principal. So the bonds of private corporations have higher interest rates than do comparable, comparable bonds issued by the government of Canada, for example, to compensate investors for the possibility that the corporations might default on the bonds. Similarly, households must also pay a default risk premium when they borrow money because they may default on loans they receive. So this is just the risk of it, of borrowing. Now with both of that, we have the long-term real interest rate equation right over here, where, which this one is the long-term real interest rate equation, where I is the short-term nominal interest rate, plus the term structure effect, and then plus the default risk. Okay. Now with that, you can find out the real interest rate equation, the final equation there. So to further illustrate, we can consider the link between the long-term nominal interest rate and the long-term real interest rate as presented by the Fisher equation. So expected real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the expected inflation rate. So expected inflation rate here. So using this last re relationship plus the long-term real interest rate equation, we have our final equation for the real interest rate here, which is the short-term nominal interest rate plus the TSE plus TP minus expected inflation rate. With that final equation in mind, we can now identify the factors that shift the MP curve. So the MP curve is determined by the bank's target short-term nominal interest rate, the term structure effect, the default risk premium, and the expected inflation rate. If any of these four variables change, then the MP curve will shift. For example, when the Bank of Canada increases the target interest rate, the MP curve shifts up, as can be seen here. On the other hand, when the Bank of Canada decreases the target interest rate, the MP curve will shift down. So overall, the central banks often increase their interest rates during booms to reduce inflation and vice versa. So with that, we can further illustrate here, for example, the factors that shift the MP curve up. We have the Bank of Canada increases the short-term nominal interest rate, 
will shift up, expectations of the future short-term interest rate increase or term premium rise. And we also have if the default risk premium increases and the expected inflation rate falls. Vice versa as well for when the MP curve shifts down. Okay, now we have just an example here. The central bank of a country called Econ decreases the short-term nominal interest rates or the target for the overnight rate. How would this shift the MP curve over here? So from what we've learned, because the central bank decreased the short-term nominal interest rate, the MP curve will shift down. This will cause the long-term real interest rate to decrease, as can be shown here. And of course, it will increase the output gap as the movement shows that it moves to the right, as can be shown here, because the MP curve shifts down. Okay, so that's everything for the MP curve and the ISMP model. Thank you.